part two of lecture four. And here we are talking about multi-class classification. So in the previous lectures, we always have in the last layer or at the end, we have one output, one activation, and it's either zero or one, it's between zero and one. So we cannot do classification with say three classes. So suppose we have images of say cats and dogs and let's add dragons and we want to classify them. And um, maybe you think one easy thing is to do is, because our A is between zero and one, maybe we can do A is just two times G of Z, and now it's between zero and two. Uh, the problem is, they are not ordered this way. So if you actually look at this example, if you think this way, then dragons, you are thinking dragons are actually cats that are more dog. So if you get kind of increasing dogness, it becomes a dragon. That's not, not the case. So they are not actually ordered in any particular way. So using the number 0, 1, 2 doesn't make any sense for multi-class classification. So, so again, remember, we talk about at the beginning that we're not interested in regression problem where, where the y is kind, kind of continuous and ordered. We are interested in, in categorical data. So these things are not ordered in any particular way. So we should not be using some kind of variation of the activation function. So now we need to figure out some other way. So of course, there are simple hacks that doesn't really work. And we'll talk about those first. So the first hack is called one versus all. So from the name, you can guess what it is. So we are going to train like three binary classification models. So train three logic regression. One is cat versus not cat. And second one is a dog versus not dog. And the dragon versus not dragon. And so suppose we actually classify a new test instance and you get, say, it's like 20% a cat and 80% not a cat and say 10% dog and 90% not a dog and dragon maybe more like 70% dragon and 30% not. And then you just pick the largest one. So that's what I'm writing here. You just pick the one with the largest activation and say it's a dragon. This lo looks like okay, but it looks like there's some problem with this. And actually there is a problem with this, is that the scale of these A are different. So when I say 20% a cat and 10% a dog, they are, not, they are not comparing the same things. So we cannot compare these two numbers. So saying we want to find the max doesn't really make a lot of sense. So this is the problem. And we probably should not do this. And let's continue with the second very obvious idea. One versus one, we just train a lo lots and lots of them, and it's just one against one. Let's try cat versus dog, cat versus dragon, and dog versus dragon. So, how do we decide at the end? We can let them vote. So voting, when whenever we are voting, there's a problem of tie and there's a, the big, bigger problem of cycles. So suppose cat and dog, the, the, so suppose the image is like more cat than dog and suppose the image is also more dragon than a cat and suppose the image is more dog than a dragon. Well, I don't actually know what, what that is, but, 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 but suppose that's the case, then we cannot decide what's going on, right? So each one votes for a different one, and we don't have enough votes. So suppose the number of votes, which is this, is like not a lot larger than the number of categories, for example, three, then we may run into problems like this. So this is not great. And we also have the problem of tie. So if we have f f f full of them, 
then we may have equal number of things both in cat and dog, so we do not know how, how to decide in those cases. So that's not a good idea as well. So of course we are going to talk about the, the actually good way to fix neural networks. And before I talk about that, we should first talk about the one hot encoding, which means we encode Y starting with 0, 1, 2. 0, 0 is represented by 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1 is 0, 1, 0, and 2 is 0, 0, 1. So it looks like the dummy variable, but for, for dummy variables, you only need two classes. Uh, oh, you know, well, what I mean is if you have three things, you only have two dummy variables, but here we actually need all three. So uh, the name for this is one hot encoding. So basically we are splitting the labels into three parts. The first part is whether it's class one, second part is whether it's class two, and third part is whether it's class three. And of course we have three activation as well. And you're seeing the next slide. We need some kind of activation function if we have multiple activation in the last layer. So let me actually draw a diagram, then I think it should be more clear. Suppose we have a neural network like with, with one hidden layer. This is our A1, A2, and A3. Now we need a superscript and things are connected. And what we'll do is in the output layer, so remember, we used to have only one and we're calling A, and A is subtracted by Y and we get the cost. So what we're going to do now is instead of this, we have three of them, A1, 2, A2, 2, two and A3, 2. And of course they are all connected. And these two, I mean these three are compared to Y1, Y2, and Y3. Remember these are one hot encoding, so it's either 0, 1, 1, or 0, 1, 0, or 0, 0, 1. And then we sum up these three, and then we get the cost. So the activation function in this layer, we we wanted again something mathematically very nice. So when we take a derivative, it becomes something nice. So we chose something that's more complicated than just three separate logistic activations. We use this. It's called the softmax function. Uh, so it's like maximum, but it's kind of softer maximum. And uh, and we use these three activations in the last layer, and we compare, I mean, we compute the cost based on all three of them. So now the cost becomes, if we want to use the square cost, then we have y1 minus a12 squared, say, plus y1 y2 minus a22 squared plus y3 minus I said plus, sorry. Then we will have a cost like this. So it's basically the same idea. If you want to divide by three or divide by six, it's okay too. But we are not going to use this obviously because this combined with this softmax is going to hard to, to be hard to differentiate. So we'll use this cross entropy again. And when you use cross entropy, many things cancel out. R remember when we did that for the logistic function, things cancel out and we end up with something very simple. So when we actually take the derivative of the cost with respect to the activation, we get something that's very simple. So the gradient is just combining these three vectors. It, it, it will be very simple as well. So note that the notation here, the i represent instance i, and j is actually the 0, 1, 2 that we talked about. Okay, so that's all I want to talk about in this part, and in the next part we'll talk about regularization.